last day for this session. Let me personally thank you all for just listening to me talk and ramble through my little feeble lesson. And, and I pray that you all uh, receive something from it and even take back with you uh, something that can be helpful to you, what, uh, whatever your journey may be. And I certainly I want to honor and thank God for the presiding prelate. Thank you, sir, for this opportunity for sharing in this conference. Um, last, yesterday we, we began, uh, we began t uh, talking about church hurt. And we dealt, well, prior to that, we dealt extensively on death, how death has affected us, uh, well, particularly personal, whether personal and impersonal, directly or indirectly, expected and unexpected. Now, before I press on, uh, we, to that, uh, we want to conclude uh, the church hurt as well as the, uh, the last portion to deal with health. I want to open by ask, make sure ask if there are there any questions or any comments about what we've already covered, what we've already journeyed through. So we, we want to be, I want to give you that option. I know at the end, there's not a whole lot of time, but if there are some questions or uh, comments that you want to make about what we've already covered, I want to give you that privilege now and then we'll jump right into the concluding portion of our lesson. Yes, ma'am. Where? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, we we could tell. I, we we could see we could see that chip on your shoulder. We could see that. It's, it's obvious. Uh, and one of the things I think I think you've identified is we 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 can't put persons on pedestals and look. We need to look at them how they are. Though we are saved, yet we're still human. We are subject to error. We're subject to. Uh, do things wrong when you when if you say you never do anything wrong then there's something wrong with that statement. Amen. Anyone else based on what we've covered the last few days, we want to give you opportunity to uh, give comment, uh, question or concern that we're gonna uh, conclude this for this season. Don't tell me she, y'all let her, she done exhausted all y'all, y'all questions and concerns and comments. She, she made some interesting, yes ma'am. You mentioned about the victim mm. Do we have the potential of moving past the victim hood? Mm. Villain hood? It's a possibility. If we, if we, if we, if we let all that fester, we then can become the attacker rather than the attacked. Is it possible? That's why that's we have to really let God work with us and, and pray through certain things because we can be the ones doing the attacking rather than holding, saying we've been attacked. That's a possibility. There's a definite possibility. Great observation. You made me go back and rewrite my dissertation. <laughs> yes, ma'am. What about persons who know what triggers you, so they intentionally set off your trigger? How do you handle that? They follow you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Great, great, great observation. Anyone else? Let me um, uh, dive right into this. I think we may have covered this, but I'm not sure. To, uh, to, it's on your hand to move from being a victim to becoming victorious and experiencing uh, transformation. Several principles are given to place us in that position. According to um, David Burchett's book, Bring Them Back Alive, Number one, don't spend time dwelling on how you've been hurt. When a person dwells on how they are hurt and who hurt them, they are inflicting their own wound, making it possible to move on from being a victim. Perhaps we can continue to throw salt on our own wounds by dwelling on what and what and who hurt us. Secondly, 
He says, stop focusing on your wound and begin focusing on being healed. Remember uh, on the late Dr. G, Bishop G. Patterson's broadcast, he would come on, be healed, be delivered, be set free. Someone have to decide, no matter what I've gone through, I have to decide to be healed, be delivered, and be set free. What is he saying? This, this author says that many cannot move away from being a victim because they spend the majority of their time giving attention to their wounds and not the potential of being healed. I want to be healed. Even uh, listen, I tell you, even when I've even I, going back to the previous subject, even when I was going through my grief, though I was angry, though I was going through a cycle of emotion, I wanted to experience some healing in my life because the hurt was really becoming more, and, the, and the, the cycle of emotions was becoming more than I was able to bear. And I didn't want to continue to be in that frame of mind and that emotional state. So I, want, I wanted to experience healing. My problem was I wanted the Lord to heal me right then and not go through the process. And so sometimes it, it, it may take a little time, but healing can happen if you begin to focus on the process, the possibility that you can be healed. Number three, do not become defensive and angry when reacting to those who wounded you, but pray that they can come under conviction. Here it is. He said it takes a lot of strength and humility to pray for the one who contributed to your hurt. Uh, Jesus said, was it uh, pray for your enemies, pray for those who despitefully use you, it's hard. Listen, let's be honest. It, it sounds good, it's spiritual, but it's hard. Because again, we have, there's a thing that we deal with daily called humanity. And even though our spiritual side says pray and our humanity will show up, say, no Lord, I'm going to deal with them like I need to deal with me. That's when we mess up, when we are give in to our humanity. Said uh, prayer will bring them under conviction. And I'm talking, I know I'm talking to at least three people in here tonight, today who can testify there's power in prayer. So somebody need to be encouraged by that right there. There's power in prayer. I mean, when you show enough pray. And when you really let, and it's not about praying a long prayer. It's not about uh, crossing every T, dotting every I. Sometimes, if you just say, now, Lord, right now, Jesus, here, here, even if they start moaning, the Lord understands what you're saying and can interpret what you're saying and deal with, and deal with you, but also deal with them. That's power in prayer, saints of God. Number four, don't, don't allow victimhood to become your identity. Don't allow it to become your identity. That is, in order for one to have peace, joy, contentment in their lives, they need to have the courage to embrace the supernatural resources found in forgiveness. Basically, embrace the supernatural power of God. And through God, you're able to forgive. You may, he, he will give you the strength to forgive. I think I heard Pastor Mentor say earlier, you may not be the best of friends. Somebody just said, you may not be friends or the best of friends or close, but God will give you the strength to forgive. Because first of all, you got to, you got to look at it like this. He forgave you. Through his, his precious blood, he has forgiven. Whenever you, whenever you bow on your knees and pray, you ask God to forgive you. Some go through the extensive of uh, sins of commission and sins of omission, but you, but you ask for forgiveness. Well, if you don't need forgiveness, why you ask for it? Don't, don't, don't look at me. Don't sit there and tell me you never do any well, you, 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 well. We all have sinned that come short of the glory. Sin defines all of us. And so, so there's power in forgiveness 
And and sometimes and truth be told, the forgiveness is necessary because it will release us or help us or keep us from focusing on whatever hurt us or whoever hurt us. So you got to do it for yourself. Huh? This is for you. It's not necessarily for them. This is going to help you move forward. Because see, watch this. Why would you are holding on to the hurt, the pain, they done moved on. They done went on about their business. They ain't giving you, they ain't, as we say back at home, they ain't studying you. Oh, y'all with me? They done moved on. They done, and you, you, and yet you still mad and upset. You see them, you start gritting your teeth, mumbling under your breath. Let, let me let me tell you this. I'm I'm telling you, the Lord the Lord done me a favor. I, I told him yesterday when I was when I had gone through uh, going through my cycle of emotions with grief and church hurt, especially with the church hurt. Let me tell you, uh, I, I I resigned. I'm gonna get to that in a moment. But I resigned from the church I was serving, and but I, but I still had I organized. I still had some uh, some resentment, and I. put <laughs> Well, listen, this bad. I promised myself, particularly the ones that created the problem for me, I said, if I see them, oh, Lord, if I see them. I, I didn't say I was going to beat them up. That could have happened, but, but if I see them, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to boil if I see them. Can I tell you all this? The Lord wouldn't allow me to see now one of them for a whole year. He, he wouldn't let me see them. Because I wasn't, my, my frame of mind wasn't right. And I, and I was wrong in what I was thinking. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't think I was wrong at the time, but I, I was mad, I was upset. I'm, let me, let me I'm going uh, to get to this point of reference. Let me, let me show you what I did. We, we were at, 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 at the convention in Memphis, Tennessee, and we went to this restaurant. Uh, uh, you know the restaurant where if you flip over the, the little tab, it brings some more meat. Brazil, boy, I tell you, that's, I, boy, that, that was just too much eating. And we were, they, they set us down, my wife and I, they set us down at the table, and Lord, one of those members showed up in the restaurant. <laughs> Lord, y'all thought, y'all just, I, I just went completely off. Oh, I did. I not on them. I said I, I the waiter. I said move me, move us from this area right now, because it it will not be nice. I I mean I was I mean I I, I almost started rolling my neck. I said move. <laughs> I, it was bad. It was bad. I, I think I embarrassed my wife so bad because she, she, I don't think she ever seen me go off like that. I, I just want, because I hadn't, I hadn't dealt with what I needed to deal with. And so I didn't, that was the one issue, but I had to, the Lord had to deal with me because the hurt that I had experienced just festered in me. And I hadn't addressed it. I hadn't come to the point where I needed to forgive. None of that. It was just, I just let it just keep on. I was in basics. I was inflicting my own wound. He says, invest oneself in, in individuals, groups, and even the church that will meet one's needs and bring about healing. That, in other words, find your support group. A support system. Uh, this kind of support will provide one with strength to move away from being the victim. We need support. We need to talk things through. You know, it's often said nowadays we need uh, the Lord Jesus and we need a therapist. Hey, listen. Yes, we do. And I ain't talking about the bootleg therapist and our friends. Uh, uh, we need a real, a licensed one that can walk us through, talk us through, help us to deal with what we are holding inside. And then you have, and then you surround yourself with a support group that can, that will, that will embrace you, not, not 
uh, point their finger at you. To experience transformation through difficult seasons of church hurt, one must decide to no longer be a victim and move towards healing so that transformation can occur. Here's where I'm going to get to the point of personal reference because this, um, I mentioned it earlier, momentarily, I resigned from the church and, and gave birth to a new ministry. Uh, though this ministry was formed, I was still, like I said, I was still holding on to resentment of the church I resigned from and, and vowed, I told you earlier, to get even with individuals and give them peace of my mind if I saw them, put. but the Lord yes. would not allow that to happen. Sometimes the Lord protects you from yourself. And I'm glad, I'm glad he does. I'm glad he does. The Lord will protect you from yourself. It wasn't until I let go of the hurt that I experienced and embraced the healing power of God that I experienced transformation. The Lord knows how. Let me, let me tell you what, let me tell you what, let me tell you what happened. This is how you know the Lord has worked on you. And three years after that experience, watch this. Our district association was meeting in July of that year. Watch this. And guess where the association met at? The church I used to pastor. No, this is go this is gonna get you. I was asked to preach. That week, it was, I, I, I consented to, but you know, I, I, that day I, I was supposed to preach, I went to my, the church I was serving, I organized, and I prayed. I said, just said, Lord, just give me what I need to say what's necessary or needed to say. Just give me power to preach. Let me tell you what happened. Look, not only the, the city itself knew what I had gone through. As a point of trans, transparency, let me, let me just be transparent. My four and a half year tenure there, I encountered so much. I mean, from unsigned letters sent around to pastors in the city through the congregation, uh, sent letters out of town to colleagues, people I knew, even to my pastor. Uh, at the time, our National Congress president, he was coming to preach for us. They sent letters to just uh, bashing me, just, just talk about me like I was nothing. But I had, I had to work through that and continue to pastor through that, knowing I was being torn down. See, that's how, that's how all the hurt, the, I, I, at the time, I can endure it. But when I was going through my grief personally, as well as that situation, then things began to conflict. But I'm telling you, they, I went through a lot. And, and so, so by the time when I, when I left the church, I, yeah, I had a lot of anger, a lot of bitterness, a lot of resentment. Ten minutes, I'm on my way out. Uh, I preached. And the Lord blessed. I knew I was healed because... When I sat down after preaching, I broke down and cried because I knew the Lord had intervened and touched my life at that point. I was going to move on from there. That's what God would do for you in your season. As recent as this year, I, I know I've transitioned. My wife and I, we've transitioned here from Little Rock, Arkansas. And uh, January of this year, I was called. I was, we was in Longview, Texas. I was called to, of course, you all know now, the Pilgrim Baptist Church, 1080 East Broad, Columbus, Ohio, 43205. <laughs> and um, right at, at the time of the call, when I was ready to announce my resignation, this, I'm tell you, this is crazy. It was Sunday, February 12th. I preached there the last time, three days later. I got a call from the church. Somehow they terminated me as their pastor. What do you do? How do you handle that? It caught me, it didn't, it, it didn't, it, it, it didn't hurt me at the time, but it caught me by surprise. 
But the next Sunday when I didn't go to church though, where I knew I was hurt. But the, the end result of that was I had somewhere to go, but it wasn't, I wasn't, I hadn't, it wasn't time for me to go yet, but I had to hasten my, my arrival here because of what happened. It hurt me, it, it messed me up financially. It caused some embarrassment because I'm telling you what it did. When I went to get my things out of the office, they had police there to watch me. I had never presented a threat to them. I've never done anything to them. Yeah, the police were watching me get my things out. Yes. And it caused me to think, if I didn't have anywhere else to go like some pastors, I would be in trouble and things would be a whole lot different. What, what about those pastors who lose their job, individuals lose their position and have no place to go? How do you handle that kind of hurt? I got a few minutes left. How does this experience transform me? It's, it allowed me to arm myself, watch this, arm myself with this truth. Don't put your trust in people or churches for your well-being or livelihood. Always trust in God. That's where my trust is. And I will say this, and I'm done. I got a few minutes left. Last thing is health challenges. Five minutes. Health, health, health challenges. Listen, people of God, it's very important, even as believers. I'm just to give you the cliff no version of this, that we take care of ourselves, our health. It's important that we have, eat the proper diet, exercise. We, we could be the most unhealthiest people. Because we don't eat right, we don't take care of ourselves. I started working out in 2012 and began trying to take care of my health and proper diet and everything. But this year alone, before even while I was trying to transition here, I've had more health challenges this year than I've ever had in my life. I mean, it got it gotten bad. I uh, the, watched the day after my birthday, March 9th, I had a, did a scope and. After doing the scope of my esophagus, it makes me why I was having a lot of heartburn. That day, from, for almost a month, my health just plummeted from uh, being diagnosed with pancreatic, pancreatitis. It's, it's, I'm over that. Uh, then just not being able to have full strength. I was weak, trying to, trying to function. And, and well, I shouldn't tell y'all this, y'all might call my members, they might have been embarrassed, but on Mother's Day this year, I passed out while preaching. But that was because I hadn't been, I forgot, I had stopped taking my iron pills. My hemoglobin had dropped. And I started, I got back on my iron pills, I've been full strength, and full throttle here. The point is, we have to do better by taking care of ourselves our health, our exercise, our diet, because I, listen, at the end of the day, when we, uh, even as a pastor, they might drape my chair for 30 days. After that, they're moving on. Whatever position you're holding, guess what? After a certain period, they will move on because, listen, we have to learn to take care of ourselves, mind, body, soul, and I promise you, if we take care of ourselves, God will take care of the rest. Amen. God bless you. May heaven smile. I've enjoyed you all. Amen. We're getting ready for worship. If you have any questions after, even after this, this session, you can come and speak to me before service starts. But I enjoyed you all. Thank you all for letting me come by and just give my little speech. Amen. Blessings upon you.